Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, in the midst of our preparation for the coming of the Lord, we celebrate today 
the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the principal patroness of the Philippines and of our Mother Church, the Manila Cathedral. Let us entrust ourselves, our families, our Church, and our country to our Immaculate Mother, so that through her maternal intercession, we may be made worthy to receive Jesus into our hearts and into our lives. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and so ask God's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my dear brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain, by virtue of the death of your Son which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. The Lord has made His salvation known. In the sight of the nations, He has revealed His justice. He has remembered His kindness and His faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous deeds. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself 
through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of His will, for the praise of the glory of His grace that He granted us in the Beloved. In Him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the One who accomplishes all things according to the intention of His will, so that we might exist for the praise of His glory. We who first hoped in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. 
Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. It is indeed a beautiful morning today to start this day celebrating the Holy Eucharist with many of you who are here, especially those who are standing outside, those who are watching us online, joining us in this celebration of the Eucharist. And as you can see, my dear brothers and sisters, we are surrounded by beauty. You can see the beautiful flowers. You can see the beautiful velvet drapes. You can see the beautiful candles, the singing of the choir, the beauty of the Word of God proclaimed to us. Recognize also the beauty of those beside you, the beauty of those who are celebrating with you together in this Mass. We also recognize the beauty of prayer, the beauty of worship. That is why I think this is such a beautiful day for many of us and for all of us that today we are truly surrounded by beauty. In fact, my dear brothers and sisters, one of the oldest hymns or antiphones to Mary, written in the 4th century and is also based on the Bible in the book of Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 7. We can see that inscribed on the canopy of our sanctuary. If you will look above, that is one of the oldest songs to Mary. And it is written in Latin, Tota pulcra es Maria. Pulcra, meaning beautiful. You are completely beautiful, O Mary. This is what we proclaim in this celebration of the Immaculate Conception. Mary, you are completely beautiful. Tota pulcra es Maria. But my dear brothers and sisters, why do we declare Mary as beautiful? Why do we tell Mary, you are completely beautiful? The answer is underneath that canopy. Hindi nyo lang ko siguro nakikita galing diyan, no? Ayan, pinapakita ng ating uh, camera. Thank you to TV Maria. No? Underneath that canopy, there is a beautiful mosaic. And again, there is a, a, an antiphone given to Mary based on Psalm 87 in the Bible. According to that mosaic in Latin, Gloriosa dicta sunt de te, Maria. Cuya feci tibi mania, cui potens est. Glorious things are said of you, O Mary, for the Almighty has done great things for you. Mary is beautiful, not because of what he, what she has done to herself. Mary was beautiful 
because of what God has done for her. That is why the two antiphones in the altar are related. You are all beautiful, Mary, because God has done great things for you. And my dear brothers and sisters, if we will look closely, that is true beauty. We are surrounded by beautiful decorations today in this feast. But let us also understand in this celebration what is beauty according to Our Lady. Beauty is not what we do to ourselves. Beauty is what God has done for us. This is proclaimed in our Gospel reading today when the angel Gabriel announced to Mary, Hail, full of grace! You are full of grace, Mary. You are full of beauty. You are completely beautiful. Why? Because the angel said, The Lord is with you. You have found favor with God, and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. That is the reason of the beauty of Mary. She was beautiful not because of what she did to herself. She was beautiful because of what God has done for her. My dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we already do many things to ourselves to make us beautiful. <laughs> but in the end, you are not still completely beautiful. Parang kulang pa rin minsan. No? Lahat na nang ginawa mo sa sarili mo, nagkulay ka na ng buhok, Naglagay ka na ng lahat ng mailalagay sa iyong sarili. Nag-diet ka na lahat. Pero minsan, parang kulang pa rin. Mary teaches us today that beauty cannot be seen in what we do to ourselves. Beauty can be seen in what God has done for you. That is why every morning when you wake up and you look yourself in the mirror, look at yourself in the mirror, I know we do not look beautiful in the mirror every morning, no? Pagkagising natin. But beauty can be seen in what, not in what we do to ourselves, but every morning, let us reflect on the reality of what God has done for you. Every morning, pagkagising mo pa lang, kahit hindi tayo physically maganda pagkagising, pero sa umaga pa lang, tanungin na natin ang sarili natin, what has God done for me? Then, we will be able to see beauty in our lives. In our first reading today, from the book of Genesis, we see Adam and Eve taking for themselves beauty. They ate of the fruit the forbidden fruits, they were tempted to seize beauty for themselves. That is why they only saw, they did not see beauty. They saw nakedness and shame because they took for themselves beauty and removed it from God. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Do you want to see beauty in your day today? Do you want to have a beautiful day today? Do we want to have a beautiful life? Then, let us learn from Mary in this feast that beauty in life cannot be seen in what we do to ourselves. Beauty can be seen in what God has done for you. Marami po akong nakikita na mga mag-asawa siguro dito, no? Tama ba ako, no? Baka mayroong mga nagsisimba ng mga mag-asawa o kaya nanonood sa ating online mass sa kanilang mga tahanan. When you look at your husband today and when you look at your wife today, do not say sometimes, no? Kapag siguro nagugulat kayong nakikita nyo minsan ng asawa ninyo, sometimes you say, Oh my, what have you done to yourself? No? Baka minsan nasasabi nyo, What have you done to yourself? No? Minsan nagugulat kayo, Ano na bang nangyari sa'yo? No? Ano bang ginawa mo sa sarili mo? Ba't ganyan? No? Naalala ko nung pinakasalan kita noon, eh, extra small ka pa lang. No? Ngayon ay uh, uh, lumusog ka na. No? What have you done to yourself? But my dear brothers and sisters, beauty cannot be seen in what you do to yourself. We will always be incomplete if we only focus on what we do to ourselves. Instead, focus on what God has done for you. Then you will see the beauty in life. You will see that your husband, you will see that your wife is completely beautiful if you realize that it was God who has given you your spouse. Kaya po, kapag mamaya pagkatapos ng misa, sabihan ninyo ang inyong asawa. No? Huwag niyong tatanungin, what you have you done to yourself? No? Instead, tell them, you are God's gift to me. God has done this to us. You are God's gift to me. That is why you are beautiful. We can see beauty if we realize what God has done for us. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we reflect on the beauty of this celebration, the beauty of Mary. And it cannot be seen only in physical beauty, in beauty that we do to ourselves. Beauty can be seen in what God has done for us. Kung gusto po natin na maging maganda, mabuti ang buhay natin, at tuwing umaga, kung gusto nating ang nakikita natin ay kagandahan ng buhay, lagi nating tatandaan, tingnan palagi ano ba ang ginawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo. At tuwing umaga, makapagpapasalamat tayo sa Diyos. Tunay ngang maganda ang buhay sapagkat napakaraming ginawa ng Diyos para sa akin. And this is the message of our second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. St. Paul proclaims, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. Purihin ng Diyos sapagkat binasbasan niya tayo ng lahat ng biyaya na maipagkakaloob niya sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. Si San Pablo po, kung matatandaan ninyo ay nakulong po ito sa preso. 
si San Pablo po ay binugbog po ito ng mga tao. Si San Pablo po ay pinagtawanan ng mga tao. Pero kaya niyang sabihin, purihin ng Diyos. Bakit? Sapagkat para sa Kanya, ang kagandahan ng buhay ay makikita sa kung ano ang mga ginawa ng Diyos para sa iyo. My dear brothers and sisters, in this celebration of the Eucharist, as we see this beautiful day of celebrating the beauty of Mary in the Immaculate Conception, let us praise God and realize and learn that beauty, the beauty of life can be seen in what God has done for us. Amen. Please all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us praise God, our Almighty Father, who wished that Mary, His Son's mother, be celebrated by each generation. In our great need, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. May Mary, the Immaculate Mother, intercede for the Christian people so that they may go forward in hope, relying on the help of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our nation never grow weary of invoking the Blessed Mother and always find refuge under her protection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May all who are facing trials, sufferings, and difficulties feel Mary's motherly love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May our Christian families and communities be centers of joy and mutual support and be protectors of life from conception to old age. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. May all of us find in Mary a model of prayer, service, and obedience to God's will. May we listen to her as she points to Jesus and says, Do whatever He tells you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we rejoice in the privilege of Mary's Immaculate Conception, may we ourselves come to you cleansed of all sin. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her Endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her 
throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Please all stand. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given to us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us all together pray. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, as we recite the words of this antiphon with which the Church of Christ has prayed for centuries. We find ourselves today before you, our Immaculate Mother. We who make up the body of Christ present in our land, recite the words of this act of consecration and entrustment in which we gather, first of all, the hopes and anxieties of our Filipino people at this moment of our history. Mother of our people, we rejoice in the name Pueblo Amante de Maria, a people who love Mary, Bayang Sumisinta kay Maria. You know all our sufferings and our hopes. You who have a mother's awareness of all the struggles between good and evil, between light and darkness, which afflict the world today. Mother of our people, accept the cry which we, deeply moved by the Holy Spirit, address directly to your heart. Embrace with the love of the mother and handmaid of the Lord, our people and our land, which now we entrust and consecrate to you, for we are truly concerned for the earthly and eternal destiny of every individual among us and for all our people. We have recourse to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities. From hatred, violence, and conflicts which divide and destroy our people, deliver us. From sins against human life, from its very beginning, deliver us. From the demeaning of the dignity of the children of God, deliver us. From every kind of injustice in the life of society, deliver us. From readiness to trample on the commandments of God, deliver us. From the loss of awareness of good and evil, deliver us. From sins against the Holy Spirit, deliver us. Accept, O Immaculate Mother of Christ, this cry, laden with the hopes and burdens, the sufferings of each one of us and of all our people. Let there be revealed once more in our own history as a people the infinite power of the redemption, the power of merciful love. May it destroy the power of sin and evil among us. May it transform consciences. O Mary, Mother of Jesus and our Mother, our life our sweetness, and our hope. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Before I give the final blessing, I would like first to thank all of you who have joined us in this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Those who are physically here in this church, those who are joining us from outside the cathedral, thank you for your patience, for standing up there for more than an hour to celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And we would like also to thank the many other thousands of people joining us online through the broadcast of this Mass. Without you, this celebration will not be beautiful. Maraming salamat po. Palakpakan po ninyo ang inyong mga sarili. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at pakikiisa. At patuloy din po ang pasasalamat namin sa inyong suporta at tulong na ipinagkakaloob sa Manila Cathedral. This will not be a beautiful celebration without your continuous help and support. We would like also to thank the many people who have helped us to make this celebration really beautiful. Our 
uh, servants of the Manila Cathedral, our lectors and greeters, the choir, our lay ministers of the Eucharist, TV Maria, who have uh, generously shared your day with us today. TV Maria will be with us the whole day today. And for all the people who have generously supported and helped us in this celebration. We would like also to thank the Pro-Life Philippines Foundation and the Daughters of Mary Immaculate International for joining us in this celebration. And after this Mass, they will be having the motorcade Lakbayan para sa buhay, pamilya at Birheng Maria. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Palakpakan po natin ang ating mga kapatid from Pro-Life Philippines Foundation. Let us now all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing now and forever. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life now and forever. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us now go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God!